Folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily T.A. Wrap. Well, we take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective, asking ourselves, what happened today, and what does it tell us about tomorrow? I do this show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, here from the base of a very cold Rocky Mountain. Uh, folks, uh, I want to take a moment to uh, to actually thank the listeners, the the neoclassical traders out there. You know, the last two or three nights, um, both here and in the TNT room, which is the trading room at, at uh, TA today, I had some great questions and some great observations. For example, last night there was. Uh, XLF and there was a talk about Citigroup having a little bit too much volume as it came back and so forth. Spot on, spot on. It, it's 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 actually very rewarding to me as a teacher to see, you know, that that what I'm trying to teach is getting through and that people are really picking up on it and understanding it, and that's that's a good feeling. I mean that's that's the whole point, right? That's what we're after. So let's take a look at the the numbers here. We had the Dow Jones. What is that? 68 points lower, 15, 8, 21 and a half. We had the S and P's down seven and almost eight, seven three quarters, 1785. Composite drops almost five, 4,033. The index uh, does drop five, 34.77 three quarters. The Russell actually was slightly green, basically flat, 11.22 and a half. We had gold get smacked again today. You know, it was down 30, up 25, down 20. Employment numbers tomorrow. We had the ECB, BOE today. They didn't do anything. Draghi came on. Really didn't offer much in the way of um, any more ease. As a result, the euro smacked up higher today. We'll look at that chart here in a second. Dollar was down, down half a percent. Uh, pretty, pretty good hit on the dollar. Oil, oil was up a little bit. Oil's right up at resistance. We can look at that chart as well. Uh, but the main thing here uh, that we're seeing in in last night we were talking about is where does this market want to go? Last night, it looked as if it was going to attempt to make a move back to the upside. Uh, it didn't really make a move to the upside, pretty much just sit there. And uh, it was inside days in a number of markets, including the SPX. And if we look at you know, what's, what's going on here, it's the same thing we've seen for a while. And that is that the NDX is attempting 
as best it can is attempting to get back into this support zone it got close to it yesterday you know today inside day volume a little bit lighter I think tomorrow you're going to see volume a little bit heavier and one way or the other this thing's either going to try to get into this or it's going to tell us it's over now our biggest tell hasn't been the S&P's the tell has been the Russell so it goes look at it first if we pop over at the Russell you know the Russell twice now has came back and has set up a retest regen it's into this retest regen area uh, that high is off of um, is off the, the high of the swing point high right 11 to 23.26 we traded up to 11.23.26 couldn't get you know couldn't stay over it so we're back down under it so when you're looking at this you're really looking at a market where it's in the top half of the range comes out and now it's in the bottom half of the range that bottom half of the range which is the bottom of the retest region area down in here is still in play now the bar I've been watching is this bar and that bar is the one that to me is going to tell us whether we're going to make it all the way down here or not and that is the price point that high is uh, 11 1998 roughly 1120 so we're still above it volume not that big today things just kind of settled down I don't know that it was a boring day but it didn't get you know it was just a drift day and I guess that makes sense because two things one is you got the employment number tomorrow that's what everybody fears and then the other piece of it is the world markets and if you remember last night we opened up with the uh, CACs the French market it had a break of multiple swing point lows those swing point lows when you go breaking them that leads to a fast move typically it's about a 92 percent or when it happens usually that fast move is two to three bars well you got two bars now where does it go to it goes right down to support that was the support we were looking at expecting it to come to it came right to it and if we pull this out and bring the uh, bring this back in so we can see it get it back over to the weekly as you know what we were looking at is we were looking at this bar the high this is the bar that we're measuring into if we go to the low of that bar and we look at the numbers associated with it at low 4131 and a quarter basically we're at 41 or we actually traded to 41 4099 so we're underneath it right that's the bar it's got to get back into tomorrow to give this thing um, what I expect it's going to do is try to get back into this instead of just melt two to three bars usually all you can expect before you get some sort of a bounce that bounce now the way this thing is set up and the way it has traded because it has done what it's supposed to is that bounce is going to come back and try to do a retest regen lower off of this breakdown you can do the ABCD structure assuming it's from here a bounce back up into that area that fails would give you another ABCD down that would take you deeper and if we go back now to the highs from the weekly and I don't remember if they retested already 4072 and we got the 40 4105 yeah so they didn't so what this is trying to do and it's going to take it a while to get there probably but what it's trying to do is get back into this and let me see 4072 it's almost there may get into it tomorrow actually well sorry as I'm looking at this I'm seeing that it's a little different it's a little different than what I was just saying and that is is that we've already gotten this break was here and we've already done the retest regen higher that was from here did a full retest immediately then we got a break here and that also did a full retest or it didn't do a full retest but did a retest 
One, two, three. Ah, no, nah, I am right. <laughs> Sorry, I hadn't looked at this close enough. 4072, you break over it here, you try to come back and you don't get to it. So this is the retest, and you're almost there. So 72 is the number, that's what, 27 points lower? So that's what it's trying to get to, whether it gets to now or doesn't. The key thing, if you consider the rest of the theories, is that you're more than six bars past it. When you come back into it, you have a very high probability that it will get bought. So if you're looking for a high probability play, I know they say don't buy falling knives, but this falling knife is falling into an area that almost always gets bought. And so my take on this is that this is, if it, if it comes into it tomorrow, this is the buy right in there. And that's, that should be a buy right there. Retest regen could take you to the low, so you got to realize that's your risk point, right? So you got to you got to put your stop down here below it, but that's the area, and that's where it looks like it's going. Okay, I started on this because I wanted to show the weakness that was still here, and the reason for saying that was that that has a big uh, influence on our markets, and probably one of the primary reasons our market couldn't lift today is that these. Uh, continue to sell down. If I look at the DAX, it did the same thing. The DAX also pushed down a little bit lower. It's right down to that low it was yesterday. Uh, the DAX can do a retest regen to the low. Uh, that price point is 90, 90.26 and it's trading at 90.84 so it can go another 60. So another three quarters of a percent. Those will be the tails to start with tomorrow and then the second part of that will be what happens with our market with respect to the employment numbers. The employment numbers it's all about tapering right now all the good news is bad news. Strengthening the economy says the Fed's gonna take their foot off the pedal and this market fears that. It doesn't know what the market's gonna do as a result of that. And anytime there's fear of the tapering coming in the market sells off. It's done it multiple times. It continues to do it. Now, if we look at, you know, expanding our our, our um, horizon here, if we go over and look at the major sectors, these pretty much look the same as yesterday. I'm going to pull this back in so we can see a little bit better. But yesterday we were talking about these were stronger, and in fact they continue to do exactly what you'd expect. Inside days, volume coming down, you know, and if I go across the board here, most of them, they all look the same. So they're all doing the same sort of scenario. They're all coming back, uh, either hanging there or coming back slightly. For a day where the S&P was down half a percent, the only ones that really got hit, XLE to a small degree, but the big one that got hit, which is what I opened the show with, was the XLF and there was comments yesterday that the volume was too heavy well yes it was and yes it came right back and 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 continued on as a result of it coming back to support there really isn't a retest regen on the higher bar because that one's already retested 2104 was the high the low here was 2102 uh, there is a retest on the lower bar still to go and that is 2078 so if we're going to get a retest on the financials, the retest is going to be off of this high. right? We've already had it up there, and notice that's where all your support is underneath. So financials, they really were the weakness today. They were the ones pulling the S&P back. The other thing that was working against this market today and I'll just pop in here and do it this way rather than go back to the other screen is the NDX and the NDX has had a big run and the NDX has had a run primarily because of Apple let's bring Apple up on a different chart here and I've already drawn in the numbers you have two things going on with Apple Apple last night reported China Mobile gonna start selling their iPhones I was doing some research on it, looked at it. It looks to me like it's probably going to add about 5% maybe to their bottom line. 
this Ron and Apple, remember I talked about, actually I did a video on this, a one minute trade. If you don't watch the one minute trades, you might want to check them out. They appear here in the video section. And there was one uh, sometime back on Apple, looks like it's already, there it is, Apple, one minute trade. So what, four days, last week. And, and the one minute trade, when I pointed it out, what I was pointing out was that Apple, this bar, and let me point it out for you, this bar here, this was the key bar, right? That was the range bar. That set up this entire range. And once you get a break after an extended move, right, to the sideways, in other words, like extended sideways move, once you get that break, it tends to run. And that's exactly what Apple did. It ran right on up, fulfilled the entire you know, range trade, which was this. This was your range trade measurement, right? It did that and continued on past it to do what? Finish off an ABCD structure, A, B point, your C point here, all the way up, finished it off. So the point of this and what you see today, if we pull this in now, you can see today on Apple that what Apple did was it sold off, spiked on the news, sold off on the news. This was a buy the rumor, sell the news. Apple's done what it's going to do at this point. Apple's going to drift back in now and we'll have to see how Apple behaves as it comes back into what will be support back down in this area. And let's pull up an Apple chart using the TA Today charts real quick. And what we're going to see there, I believe, is we're going to see some support form probably yeah we got enough volume we'll probably see support form up in this area so I would think somewhere in here 547 558 to 547 so Apple is not at this point going to contribute more to the NDX now what is happening is you're seeing some of the others start to step up Microsoft's trying to although you had a big wide high volume bar today that probably is a range trade bar so Microsoft unless it gets back over it tomorrow it's probably done what it wants to do the other one these are the big three the 33 percent of it is Google Google still can go higher it's just hanging and the one past that is the one that we looked at a second ago which is the SMHs if the SMHs break remember the SMHs either way they break you got the same scenario. You got swing point high here, swing point high there, swing point high here. It hasn't quite been able to get over yet. If you get over those things, you're going to get a fast move. This is a good 33% of the weighting of the NDX as well. You can see volume starting to come into it. This to me looks like it's anticipating a breakout to the upside. If so, that would be the one that would carry the NDX as long as the others just simply held you know without huge moves down so maybe that's the catalyst that's looking for for the end of year run on the NDX the SPX of course XLF XLE XLI probably XLF maybe has to finish back down if we look at the XLI that one still looks well XLE is just kinda hanging so all of these together you know suggest that this market's gonna try to move higher even with what we saw in Europe because that European market is probably going to play out over the next week or two then you've got holiday trading where everything goes dead and you just drift so it could be first of next year before you see the European markets actually try to pull back deep enough and I'm making assumptions here of course but that's the way they're set up you know, as long as this retest regen holds and we get that bounce back up and the probabilities are very high that it does that, that's going to put or it's going to take away one of the negatives on our market. And unless that unemployment number really comes out horribly tomorrow, we're probably going to see that bounce I was talking about yesterday. Let's pop over to the ox markets. And I see a question on UNG, so we'll look at it as we go. So if we look here at, uh, let's start with the dollar because the dollar was the one that was pressing. 
and it was pressing to the downside. And so the dollar was trying to hold this area, was unable to. The price point there, 21.66, we traded down. 21.58 was the close. So what does that mean? That means that we've traded back down now below the range. The range that we were trying to hold was up here, right? Now you're down into the lower half of it. That means you can trade all the way to the bottom of it. So tomorrow will be a critical day for the dollar. And that is, is that once you pop into another range, you really only have a bar or two to get out of it. Because if you don't and you stick around there too long, you're going to trade down to the other side. And that means that you could trade all the way back down. There are some areas that will offer some support. The TA Today charts will draw it in here tonight probably. And that's really the last one. So that's kind of the key area there. You get underneath that, you're probably going to the bottom again. That's your dollar. And there is ABCD structures here, but they're finishing off real quick, right? You get one here, that one finishes off. You get another one, that one finishes off too. So there's really nothing to drive it farther. If we go look at the FXE, that's the other half of this. I had thought that Draghi would try to talk this thing down. Um, if that was his intention, he failed. 135.11 trades up to 135.24, closes 135.16, so it's over. It does 7.12, volume over the 6.67. That suggests this thing's going to at least close this gap, that bottom of the gap. 136.36. That looks to be the target. You get over that, and the other big bar, that's the last bar, 135.55. And I would think that you hit this tomorrow. So actually, that's that's the number to watch, is right here. It's this bar. And that's right there. That's where the top of the resistance is. Excuse me, it's right underneath it. It's the bottom. So that little resistance zone is anchored uh, by this bar, these two bars. And what are those? That's the, let me get the dates on them for you. October 18th bars. And that's, that's where you're looking. That's the dollar. Let's go look at the gold market. Remember yesterday we got the bounce we expected and uh, then it couldn't go anywhere. I actually did a doji today. Actually that looks good. Now that's interesting coming into tomorrow because the gold market has been selling off on the tapering news. This looks more and more, you know, as I go through these sectors and go through these ox markets, this looks more and more like what you're seeing is a, you know, in this case, a sell the rumor, buy the news. That's the way that one looks. So let's go to the UNG. There's a question here. Where should I put my stop? Well, where did you get in would be one question. Um, oh, you got your nice spike today over the swing point highs, multiples. Hey, this looks good. You finally got what you were after. And I know you've been in this for a while. So you got a break of this swing point high, that one. That's two of them here. And if we pull this over and take a look at the, um, the weekly, Assuming this holds tomorrow, what you actually have is you have a swing point high here that you're breaking as well. Let's get a number on that one and see what it is. Uh, that's 1998. Today you closed 2019. You hold that tomorrow. You've got another one sitting here at 2029. 2019. Yeah, this is a good situation. So what I would put my stop at is I'd put it right up underneath here, right up underneath here. Give it nothing, right? It should not trade back there again. As a matter of fact, you don't want to take your profits yet. Because remember, when you get a break of multiple swing points, you typically get two to three bars continuation on the upside. And they're usually fast. They don't wait, right? They spike. So just put your stop. If this thing starts to spike tomorrow, and you get that weekly taken out as well and held, then expect another spike maybe Monday, Tuesday, and just bring those stops underneath all the way up. And then on that second to third day, take some money off of it. That's the way you trade those things when you get them. So that's a, that's a great, oh yeah, yeah, I remember you, you, 
Dan is saying he got it at the bottom. And yeah, we were talking about it back then. I forgot where you got in. That is a heck of a run, Dan. That is a great trade. We talk about great trades. That's a great trade. Excellent. Very happy for you. All right, let's look at uh, let's let's look at the what else we got here. What else? Do, oh, I don't want to forget the bonds. Okay, this if I have a most worrisome spot, it's here. Bonds are set up to break potentially much lower, and that's a real problem that they do. Okay, because that's going to put pressure on the markets if they start to break. And what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at breaks on two potential time frames, right? You have, let me get a different drawing tool, you have this low that's already broken, right? You've gotten underneath it, okay? This swing point low and this one, right, are the ones that are trying to break. And they're underneath them. And why don't we show, is that six underneath that close? It's not, it's not a close underneath. And this one had already been broken, that's why. Okay, so you have, let me, let me redraw this because I said it wrong. So now that I look at it, that's why we got the charts, right? We can't always see it right. This swing point low was previously broken already. We broke it here, right, on this bar. The swing point that's in effect now that's trying to break is down here, right? That swing point low, if it breaks, and it's right at it, and it doesn't have that much volume, so it could get a confirmed break. And again, you're coming into an employment number. It's amazing how these things always line up where they're do or die on a particular event, right? So the market sets up for the event. You have a pattern that doesn't look good, and if we go over to the weekly, Right? You don't have the volumes. Remember, the volumes aren't there because this thing wants to trade higher. It's been telling us it wants to put in a bottom, just like that UNG we were looking at. But it's at the danger zone, right? And when it gets at the danger zone, right, you have to be cognizant of the fact that it could break. And if it breaks, right, there's a swing point low on this bar. If that bar breaks and you get a break here and you do it on a Friday, right that's double trouble and again that's multiple breaks multiple time frames that can lead two to three fast bars to the direction of the break if that happens what are these these are inversely related to interest rates which means interest rates will spike and that will kill any rally attempt so tomorrow shapes up as a crucial day in multiple ways interest rates a number of the other uh, markets that we've seen overseas and the whole idea of taper tomorrow will be you know the answer to all of those and and right now it looks to me like the market's setting up to actually hold and to bounce there's there's enough to tell you that that's what it's trying to do the flip side of that is there more danger here than probably meets the eye unless you're looking at these things, in particular the bonds. And I did see, I, I glanced through it here, I, I did see that the, um, the municipal sold off a little bit more today and the junk bonds as well. So, you know, I'm running out of time. Let me quickly try to take your questions. I had one uh, texted to me, actually last night I missed. So let me pop over there real quick and I'll go over a few minutes here and finish up. So let me, I'm, I'm moving a little slower tonight than usual. So let me go over here. So one of them was Pitney Bowes. And actually, I want to come back to Pitney Bowes. Maybe we'll do that next week because there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, it's actually a very educational, maybe I'll do a one-minute trade on it tomorrow and talk about it. The question was, where do you measure? you measure against this 1029 bar or do you measure against the swing point high? Well, what you're really doing here. Um, is your is your you've got to measure against this one, and and what the way this thing is set up is it actually wants to make it all the way down to the bottom. I'll do a one minute trade on it, or I'll cover it next week. But that's your measuring bar. If you stay into it for another bar or two, you're going to go to the bottom, and it looks to me like that's where it's heading. So uh, I'd be a little careful here if you're into this and you're trying to stay into it. 
Uh, what's the other questions? We got one on TRIT. Let's see what this is. So TRIT is, um, looks like TriTech Holdings. And these guys are in the industrial sector. It looks like they're a water resource company. Wow, so this had a big spike up, came all the way back. I, you know, so what is the question? I'm wondering about it. Do you think it's worth a play here? And could it hold here for a buy and bounce play? I don't know. You know, you really need... You know the charts. The charts aren't going to help you here, you know, because this can break. Should it hold? Yeah, but the fact that it's bled all the way back after that big move on whatever the spike was doesn't give me much confidence. So can you get a bounce? Yeah, you can get a bounce. Is it a high probability? No, it's not. Not at this point. Um, is it worth the trade? Which is what you're asking me. I wouldn't mess with it. You're not doing enough volume, right? Fourteen twenty-eight, eighteen twenty-six. You get in this thing, it's going to be hard to get out. If they gap it down, you know, you won't get out. So, no. To me, no. I wouldn't mess with it. PD asks, uh, what do I think about JPM? Let's see what JPM looks like. And I think JPM was coming back with everybody else today. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so your volume's coming back a little heavy. You're coming back into breakout areas. All right, so the on the weekly, you have to play this one on an intermediate term time frame, 55.60. This is a spot fee, you know, and, and it actually set up well. The volumes are right. It's it's set up well. This, you know, if you if you're looking at this, trying to understand what to do with it, you know, the nice part about it, this is your retest regen. It's right at it, right? And then you didn't have a retest regen off of this one either. So you've got support off of it. It has decent volume on it, and it's right underneath it. So you have two zones, if you will, of support right in the same spot. That's always a good deal, right? That gives you, that gives you like multiple support right in that area. Now, I know the charts don't show it except for back here, and that's because you don't have the volume spikes. Uh, but... Yeah, I think you can, I think if you believe this market's going to run into the end of the year, which I still think it's going to try, uh, this is the place, and you don't have to give it hardly anything. If you want to play half of it on a short-term basis, you can play half real tight. Let me see what that number is, because that's where you actually would like to get it, right into that gap. That's 55.30, and the bottom is 56, excuse me, 50... 560 and the top is 5590. So, yeah, if, if, if it comes down first thing in the morning and there's no volume again, yeah, that's the spot. You should buy it. You may not even get it. I mean, because you're going to get the employment number. This market's going to do whatever it's going to do before it, before we open. So, you're not going to have much of a chance to grab it if, if it if the market opens strong. We'll see how it opens. All right, let's see here. What else? Uh, real quick. Thanks for all you do. Yeah, thank you, Dan. I appreciate you being out there. Could not have done the trade without your help and all the help you guys in TNT. You know, guys, it every trade is not going to work. What you're looking for is you're looking for the big trades. You're looking for the high probability trades. You're looking for the trades that more than likely give you the opportunity to really make some money. And you've got to wait on setups. And you've got to find those setups. You've got to find the high probability setups, and you've got to jump on them. And you've got to be decisive. So when you say thank you to me, it's really to yourself. You're learning. You're reading the charts well. And you're the one pulling the trigger. So, folks, I appreciate you being there. You tell friend, tell two. Tomorrow should be a big day. You have yourself a great night. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Actually, I'll see you Friday. Have a good one, folks. Good night.